My name's Kylie. Um, I have a special guest with me today, uh, David Foss. Hi. <laughs> Good afternoon. Um, so David and I were actually guests together on a program last week, um, the Affordable Housing Show, and we had a lot of interesting conversations there, which um, I think we're going to be able to continue today and also uh, talk a little bit more about the way that people can use different art forms um, in hard times like poetry, photography, painting. Uh, and so I just want to start with a poem. Um, this is a poem by Mary Oliver. She's a, I think, a pretty well-known American poet. Um, and I'm going to read what I believe is probably her most well-known poem. Um, a lot of people have found a lot of comfort in this poem. It's called Wild Geese. You do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert, repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. Tell me about despair, yours, and I will tell you mine. Meanwhile, the world goes on. Meanwhile, the sun and the clear pebbles of the rain are moving across the landscapes, over the prairies and the deep trees, the mountains and the rivers. Meanwhile, the wild geese, high in the clean blue air, are heading home again. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination, calls to you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting, over and over announcing your place in the family of things. Very nice. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's funny. You, you read that one. I went down to uh, Addison and south of here yesterday. Me and my uh, worker went down. And in Addison, they have the uh, well, goose, goose management area. Oh, really? And it's kind of fun. Starting now and more when the geese migrate, they stop there every year. It's just funny how they seem to know where to go. <laughs> and there's all kinds and colors and people just tend to go down there and draw them and uh, do a lot of photography there. It's just it's an amazing sight, thousands and thousands at one time. That's really interesting. I didn't know about any of that. Yeah, it's that reminds I'm just you know, talking about them flying and they go down there and it's kind of a summer home for them or something because yeah. they're uh, <laughs> enjoying the water. There's water over there, so they're always uh, swimming around and playing, and it's uh, very relaxing for a human as well just to watch the geese have a good time and settle in. Yeah, um, I, I think that's a lot of what Mary Oliver's poetry is about is, I think as a poet, she spends a lot of time in nature. Um, like more, I don't know, like um, she goes out walking for entire days and, and just kind of finds her inspiration in like those those beautiful moments and in those painful moments of nature and and draws comfort in them and then is somehow able to put it into these beautiful words that give comfort to other people and calmness and peace. I agree and what's interesting is we've been doing a lot getting ready for our hop coming mm -hmm. up and which is coming up in September about a month from now which is gonna be fun and we're learning about all the different kinds of art as well. And poetry is part of it. Um, the shadow art, which you, again, go back to nature and whatever you see in that. Others see maybe a little bit different and mm -hmm. they bring it out and draw and color. And I do the photography and I see a little different stuff as well. But with our hub, we're gonna have a chance to see all the different forms with people looking at nature and like Mary Oliver was talking about so it's a real nice connection between art and nature mm -hmm. um, I want to I want to just step back a moment and and let everyone know how David and I met we met at a meeting um, at Decker Towers where you live right um, about the art hop and Something really ha exciting is happening at Art Hop this year. Uh, BHA residents will have a chance to show off their art at the Bobbin Mill, which is yes. another BHA property. 
Um, and and uh, so, David, you're a photographer. I am. Um, so I'd like to hear a little bit about that, about your photography practice. Well, I've been doing it since I was eight years old, of all things. I went to Williston School here, and and Williston is definitely a little progressive, which is nice. And while going to regular stuff, I was also thrown into photography and basket weaving and cooking. <laughs> so by the time I was nine, I was able to start doing stuff in the dark room. And my grandfather just taught me basically what to look for, and he had a beautiful garden, and so I've just been basically shooting ever since. And then I've been lucky. I run into people, you know, writing, and I shot a album, a couple of record album covers, which were kind of fun. <laughs> and but this art hop project we got gives a chance for. Draw, drawing and photography, pull out some folks that make jewelry. I mean, it's just the gamut of art is just amazing. Yeah, um, could you talk about the, the kind of um, artistic talent that you see from the, your fellow residents at Decker Towers? Yeah, that's a cool place too. Um, Decker Towers is basically a BHA, Burlington Housing Authority, um, apartment complex. There's elderly, there's uh, folks with disabilities, um, there's folks that do photography, there's several folks that are amazing at writing and doing um, some interesting poetry. Um, there's folks that do oil painting, there's folks that do pottery and make jewelry, and there's so many differences at that place, but all the differences come together and makes us a very strong community and a very active community. And it's just nice, it's finally starting to show it to other people and get involved with each other with it, which didn't happen for a while. We're starting to show each other's um, photos and paintings in the building and at our hop have a chance to do it then. More people have a chance to see it. And I'm just looking forward to it. <laughs> so are, um, are other people getting excited about the art hop? Yeah, they are. Um, what's nice, we've been having um, the drop-in art sessions yeah. where you've come in and Corinne. Corinne is another lady that uh, does some fantastic paintings. And you'll see that at our uh, art hop in September. And we've given a lot of the residents down, and we've been learning about painting. We've been learning, people have been able to draw with pencils, you know, and crayons. And everyone's excited, and they're getting excited. The whole idea was to get these drop ins to get people a little bit pumped up for Art Hop. And they're going to be able to show some of the things at Art Hop. And I think people take pride when they, they do something and then. Other people see it. it. There's a little bit of pride in there, and I don't know. It's just going to be a neat experience for everybody. Yeah, I think um, I think you're right about that. The the pride that comes with showing off your artwork. Um, I remember when I was in high school. Uh, there's this program, and I I believe that it's ongoing. It's still happening. Uh, that was sponsored by the. Um, CCSW, WS, uh, Tinian County Waste District, Solid yeah. Waste District. There we go. The basically like the dump. Um, so <laughs> they sponsor this thing called the Recycled Art Project, um, and high school students were invited to make art out of recycled materials and then submit it to the contest. And then those pieces that were accepted were put in the Frog Hollow Gallery on Church Street. I love which, that place. Yeah. And it's usually a, a gallery reserved for like fine artists, but to be a high school student showing off our work in this beautiful gallery space, like really built up our confidence and and uh, you know gave us gave us that sense of accomplishment. And it's kind of fun. We were kind of talk about it earlier that in times where it's a little unsettling, um, both Burlington and nationally. It's so much, everyone's 
doesn't know what's going to happen. I mean, people are concerned about war and not being able to find a place to live and a lot of medical issues. And I think art and music and poetry, all that gives a way for people to both communicate about it, but also do some protesting about it. I mean, when times are rough, music tends to start out maybe a little down, but then there's a groundswell and people start, it starts pumping up and it's just a way to bring people together. And I don't know, I'm finding more and more, especially in a place like Burlington, that people really want the same thing. They just want good housing. They want something to eat and good medical care. They don't want war. I have friends that uh, live in Russia. I used to write pen pals. I used to write them all the time. They want the same thing we do. It's kind of governments that kind of mess it up for people, I think. But. Um, you brought along a poem written by uh, um, someone else in your building. Yep. We have some folks that are really quite good as far as uh, their writings and their beliefs. And we had a fellow, uh, one of our residents passed away early last fall, and she was able to come up in just a, a day or two of a nice poem, nice story. And uh, between writing it and using a little photography to accentuate it a little bit yeah so nice so that's you the this is a uh, the photo that you took yes paired with her poem yeah um so i haven't read this poem before but uh i could i could try to read it now um hopefully i won't stumble on the words too much i don't think you um <laughs> so would you like me to read it sure okay so this is by um decker towers resident melissa verdone is that yep. how you say That's your name? Say yep. Okay, um, and it's called Ode to Mark. Just who was our affable friend who answered to Mark? I'm not sure I can fully answer on my part. What I did know about him, I'll proudly say, he was a man who lived his life most each and every day. He was not a man with many limitations in his head. If you saw his affection for his kilt, little more need be said. <laughs> a life of his own beckoning, Questionable or not, he surely led. From his mouth, astonishing facts and intelligence often bled. He was always polite, friendly, and fair. I'd often see him rocking to music, hidden by the headphones in his hair. My, Clarice the Beast of a dog showed him a special kind of affection. Animals know genuine kindness. Of this, I surely reckon. He was always inviting, happy, and willing to share. He did what he wanted, saying some of us wouldn't dare. The point he was our friend, neighbor, and known to so, so many. The last years of his life spent at Decker Towers, surrounded by family. His departure was swift, sudden, and surprising, but I have no doubt his soul ascended, quickly rising. He's now in the arms of the afterlife, forever glorified. Let us not forget his spirit and lay to rest how he died. Very nice. Nicely read. Thank you. Um, that's really beautiful and, and uh, I don't know, shows a lot of, I didn't know Mark, but it shows a lot of love for him. Yeah, we find in where we live, a lot of folks, again, we all come from different factors. Um, there's folks that had quite well off um, lives and great jobs and then they ended up at Decker Towers. There's folks that uh, um, end up different kind of handicaps and disabilities and folks like Mark who just was community bound. A lot of us, we just, you know, all over downtown Burlington, homeless a lot of times and we end up at a place like Decker Towers and we start becoming family. We, t we become, make our own family. And that's what we really have become. And that we've been able, that's why Melissa was able to write a, a poetry, some, you know, Ode to Mark, because um, we do really get to know each other. And folks, they do come and cry on our shoulders. Um, we help each other. We have garden over there. And then 
people are really excited again about the art thing. They want to, they make photos for people. There's one lady that uh, paints wheelchairs and stuff, different kind of. Do, paints on wheelchairs or paints pictures of wheelchairs? No, on the wheelchairs. Oh, wow. So that's kind of fun. <laughs> are there, um, are there a lot of wheelchair users at Decker Towers? Yeah, there's quite a few folks that um, have lost limbs or just getting, in, unfortunately, starting to get a little bit older and they need the ability to mm -hmm. get around. And Decker Tower, well, the nice thing about Decker Towers, it is on the bus line. A um, lot of ability to move around with, you know, wheelchairs and other devices. And folks are there to help, too. Um, so, I'm kind of curious about the wheelchair painting. Is she painting her neighbor's wheelchairs? Or? Yeah, she does. She will like paint on the seats, yeah. you know, walkers and things like that. She likes to do um, like cows and <laughs> things like that. So, she's an older lady. Really, a lot of these folks have a lot of energy and a lot of spunk. And, mm -hmm. um, a lot of these folks do live alone, you know, in their own apartments, but We've all become friends. We've all become basically uncles and aunts and sisters and brothers. And it's so fun when she does something like that because everybody sees it and they're like, wow. And, you know, it does put a smile on your face. Yeah. It's, um, it's really cool to hear the way you talk about the, the residents there because um, Decker Towers really is. It's such a huge building. It's, is it 11 stories? It's 11 stories. Yeah. It's still the tallest building in Vermont, and it was the tallest building in the whole state for a while. I yeah. think it still is. And you, you often hear how buildings like that in, in cities, high rises and all, are can create a feeling of isolation for people, and people don't end up knowing their neighbors. So it's, well, it's, it's really it, nice that you're avoiding that at Decker Towers. Well, for the most part. Um, yeah, it doesn't always, Decker Towers hasn't always had the best reputation. Mm -hmm. And I think folks there are trying to make it better, make people understand the situations there. And I don't know. And through one of the things, everyone's starting to do things together, the stories, the drop in art, the chance to do the projects, um, at what we're going to do with the art hop. And I mean, it's it, it the, the the place is changing. People, some of them do tend to stay in their apartments and stay a little isolated, but more and more people are sharing their lives. Um, so, so what would you attribute that to? Do you know why that's happening? Um, I don't know. It seems like people are reaching out a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Um. We're lucky, Burlington Housing, we do have, they have a lot of different, they have uh, family housing situations, they have strictly elderly housing, they do have um, the places where folks with disabilities can communicate and live with a, a productive life, you know, not feel isolated or something like that. And we have SASH coordinators, people that help bring art and entertainment and help monitor your health issues, and um, those are good. And I think we can all use a little bit more of that. Yeah. I think people want to feel like other people care about stuff, and that doesn't always happen. But I think the people in this building, I think people are starting to realize there are people that do care about their situation. And through these art things we're doing, yeah, they're able to share them. And um, we we learned last year some folks uh, we made apple pies and sold them. Um, we had folks show us how to do um, little stockings, little like booties kind of things. We painted those and stockings. Yeah, little kitty booties. <laughs> they were kind of fun. They're really cool. And everyone's like, wow, that's fun. And people are laughing. And instead of feeling isolated, they yeah. come out. Um, yeah, I've been lucky enough to attend the past two art drop-in sessions at Decker Towers. Um, and 
I, I was really impressed by the energy and the, the way that people are interacting with each other and all, and you know, it's so simple. So these were organized by um, Corinne, who's the artist we mentioned earlier. And you. And yeah, and, and, and me. Um, <laughs> so it's nice it's, having it's, that community energy come yeah. into a place like Decker Towers and then you meld together. Yeah. And you learn both from the residents and you learn from you guys that are bringing the... Yeah. Well, it's it's so simple. Like, Corinne got together, I think, six colors of paint, right? Blue, red, green, yellow, black and white. And everyone uses those those colors in their own way. You know, some people lay it on really thick and create this beautiful textured abstract thing. Other people water it down and use it almost like watercolor and make these delicate little flower scenes. Well, I thought it was funny. We had one of our folks there the first time she made a t-shirt. She kind of made yeah, a chai. with a chai with yeah. the paints and twisted and made it um, tie-dye kind of thing. And that was fun. <laughs> the when it was done, it was funny because the colors didn't come out as bright as we thought they were going to. But it was still really interesting. Yeah. And creativity. People love these ideas and go for it. Well, I remember at first she asked me, she's like, is, um, is anything happening with these cups of dirty water? And I thought she wanted to know where, where to dump it out yeah. and get fresh water. And then she said, no, I, I don't throw anything away. I use everything. Yep, and, and she does. And she does, yeah. And she, she uh, brought down... Um, a couple of, of sweatpants and like white t-shirts and started knotting them up and putting rubber bands around and, and did tie-dye right there with the dirty paint water. And you're right, they came out great. Yeah, they did. It's, it's that kind of energy that motivates people. It starts out in a small community like that and then it spreads other places and hopefully between the poetry and everything, it's kind of isolated a little bit from the real world, maybe. <laughs> yeah, right. um, art can be, it can be kind of a way to, to either deal with the real world, deal with these hard things, or it can be a, a kind of respite from them, you know, when it gets too much. Yep, and I think a lot of it, poetry is one of those things they might, you know, see something like flowers or something, and they start writing about it, and then it turns into descriptions or whatever. And so, a lot of times, I think the poetry part of it becomes leads into other art forms. It leads into the photography and the paintings. People have words, and they wanna, they have an uh, idea in their mind what mm -hmm. they're thinking of, and so they put that on a paper or, you know, on a bag or something, and and it just grows from there, I think. And it's funny how art has really become more of a tool, activist tool, because words motivate, mm -hmm. but I think pictures do a great job explaining the situation a little bit better. Instant media now is just, you can't hide anything. People, politicians and stuff can't lie anymore. <laughs> they used to. But with the instant cameras and leaks and stuff, people find out about everything right now. And that's, uh, that's good for our art and our poetry and our photography and our creates new truths. And yeah. Um, yeah, I think, I don't know, art does have the capacity to like tell those truths that might be hard to say in a, in a more simple way. Um, or maybe art is the simple way of saying them. Um. <laughs> Sorry, I got a little lost there. No, no, it um, makes it, it's, it's very true. Yeah, and, and you mentioned the, the, um, the instant media and the social media and like how everything is moving so fast. And I really appreciate it when people use it to share their art and share, you know, like something beautiful they saw in the world. Um, and, and, you know, in, instead of just using it as some, I think Facebook started out as a way to like complain about something or other. And well, you know, they've, they've, they've done it in such a way where 
they've shown a lot of negative stuff, mm -hmm. but somebody always finds something positive out of the most negative things, and that just those kind of things could take take off like crazy. That's where you get the main likes. I mean, <laughs> animals and flowers and you know something good happening in a pile of not so good things. So that's really. Um, I I did bring along one other thing to read. Sure. Um, so it it feels like it fits our conversation about the importance of art in um, in everyday life. So this is from the Bread and Puppet Theater. Are I you familiar with that? I love those guys. That? Oh yeah. I've actually never been down. I've um, seen Crossberry. They come. They um, wandered down here a bit. They've been in many parades. Yeah. Uh, They've been down to Mardi Gras in Burlington, a lot of different things. And they've been down to Washington. They've been all kinds of events yeah. the worldwide. So the so the Bread and Puppets, so they have the performance aspect of it, the big puppet shows. And then they also have the cheap art thing, yep. which is so their whole idea is like art should be for everybody. It is. And um, so I want to read this. This was written in uh, 1984, um, and it's called the Why Cheap Art Manifesto. Uh, people have been thinking too long that art is a privilege of the museums and the rich. Art is not business. It does not belong to banks and fancy investors. Art is food. You can't eat it, but it feeds you. Art has to be cheap and available to everybody. It needs to be everywhere because it is the inside of the world. Art soothes pain. Art wakes up sleepers. Art fights against war and stupidity. Art sings hallelujah. Art is for kitchens. Art is like good bread. Art is like green trees. Art is like white clouds in blue sky. Art is cheap. Hurrah. Hurrah. <laughs> well, that's very, very much goes with what we talk about. And hopefully folks will get that idea when they come down to Art Hop. Yeah. Stop in at Bob and Mill see what residents are doing, see what you're doing, see what Corinne's doing, learn about community, learn about history. Yeah. And just enjoy the weekend. Yeah, see that art really is for everybody. Every, and you'll be able you know. to read with poetry, we will hear things, you'll be able to smell things. <laughs> and yeah, I'm really excited about the art hop. Um, we don't have too much time now, so let's just let everyone know that what we're talking about the art hop is um, September 8th, 9th, and 10th in the South End Arts District. Um, so the what we've been talking about here, the Burlington Housing Authority residents' involvement with it, um, that's all going to be at Bob and Mill uh, Community Room, which is a BHA property. Um, we're going to have people from Bob and Mill, Decker Towers, Wharf Lane, hopefully other buildings, yeah, um, others. showing their art. Uh, it's so the, if, if you're on the Art Hop route, um, it's directly across the street from the Space Gallery um, and the soda plant there. So it's right in the heart of everything. Um, and you can come to check out the art, uh, come to a couple of presentations. I think there's the going to be a... reception is yeah. Friday night. Yep, there'll be a reception so. Friday. Um, do you know what time that is, or is it... It's uh, 6.30 to 8.30, I Okay, believe. so there'll be... Um, some, some snacks and, and yeah listen to your uh, your presentations mm -hmm. and chance to meet all the artists and uh and get to see you know the importance of art in everybody's lives yep no it's good and listen to poetry yeah there'll be some good good poetry there too you think so people will be reading yes that's awesome yeah I'd, I'd be excited to hear this poem by melissa it's really beautiful so i'd like to see what else comes out of uh decker towers and all the other buildings there will be some. There will be some memories for sure. <laughs> uh, um, well, I don't. I don't want to start anything new. I think we're right out of time here. But um, okay. this is a great conversation, David. Yeah, and uh, I, hopefully people will keep the conversation going among yeah. each other. And remember, when you have these lives at five, so you can call and talk about things like that. Oh yeah, read your poem. Read a poem you like. Ask us a question. Create a little controversy. That works, too. Yep. <laughs> uh, well, that's it for the Poetry Show. Thank you.